we have some new data when it comes to the 2024 car market. So let's talk about it. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, once per month, I make a video going over the current state of the used car market. And we do this by reviewing data from resources like Cox Automotive and Mannheim, as well as going over used car data on websites like Car Gurus and looking at used vehicle listings on cars.com to see what cars are actually being listed for in the real world. I have found that this video series is incredibly helpful for people who are wanting to learn more about where the current state of the car market lies and whether or not right now or the near future could be the right time to buy a used car. And so let's dig into the data. The Mannheim Used Vehicle Value Index fell to 203.1, a decline of 14.7% from a year ago. And the month-over-month -month decrease from February to March was only 0.4%. However, the non-adjusted price increase month-over-month -month was actually an increase of 3.1%. The three-year-old index, which is an index of, well, three-year-old cars, which just happens to be a segment of vehicles that makes up a large portion of the used car market, that index increased by 2.1% from February to March, which means that three-year-old cars on average increased in price by 2.1%. MMR retention was at 99.5%, which is lower than the 99.9% .9 that we saw in February. This means that cars were selling at a discount for the month of March. And the average sales conversion rate was at 62%, which shows that there was relatively strong demand for the month. So what this tells us is that in the month of March, overall car prices were relatively flat. In some regard, they went up, but overall on average, they were pretty unchanged. And overall, demand was also higher in the month of March. But this data isn't surprising surprising at all, and there are two words that can describe why. Tax refunds. Springtime is typically a strong time for dealerships in the automotive market because people are filing their taxes, they're getting their tax refunds, and they're using that money to buy things like cars. And according to some reports, the average refund is actually 6.1% higher than last year. And while the majority of tax refund recipients are planning on using their tax refunds for things like investing, saving, or paying down debt, there is an entire marketing campaign with dealerships targeting refunds in order to buy a new car. So refunds are absolutely having an impact on the used and new car market and the way in which dealerships are going about selling cars. But the silver lining here is that tax season is very quickly coming to a close. And once tax refunds stop being distributed, once tax season is over, we can expect for the car market overall to normalize a bit more. And so the bump that we are seeing from tax refunds, it's definitely temporary and it's seasonal. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the total used car market fell 14.7% year over year. But whenever we look at market segments and how the different segment of vehicles make up this 14.7%, you can see the breakdown here. Surprisingly, luxury cars have fallen the least and they've fallen 13% year over year, followed by SUVs and crossovers, which have fallen 14.4%. Next is pickups, which have fallen 15.4%. Compact cars are next with a decline of 16.8%, and midsize cars have seen the largest decline of 17% year over year. And to kind of put icing on the cake, whenever we compare non electric vehicles to electric vehicles, electric vehicles are seeing pretty steep declines in value with 19.1% declines year over year, while non-EVs have seen 12.8% declines. And while we're on the topic of vehicle segments, let's take a look at car gurus and let's see how different makes, models, and segments are trending over there. Now, I've talked about this a lot on my channel before, but one of the reasons why I like to look at car gurus is because it gives us a good idea of what different vehicles are being priced at. The car gurus used vehicle value index basically accumulates all of the different vehicles that are listed on their site, and they give you averages of what these vehicles are listed for. And so it gives us a really great representation of what used car prices are priced at in the real world. And while I wouldn't rely on car gurus used vehicle value index as the only metric to measure used vehicle market health, I do think that it is one of many indicators to give you a really great idea of the overall market as a whole. So here we are over at Car Gurus, and this is actually very, very interesting. And this is the first time that we've seen something like this happen in a very long time. So let me explain. Now, this is a Car Gurus index graph. This is what this line represents. And as I mentioned, it's kind of the accumulation of all of the different vehicles that are listed on Car Gurus. And we have the date set for about a year. So from April 5th, 2023 to April 6th, 2024. And you can see that for the most part over the last year, with the exception of late spring, early summer of last year, car prices have been on a pretty steady decline. But in recent weeks, we've actually seen prices increase. And you can see that this increase started at the very end of March. Scroll down to the table, you can see that this is depicted very, very clearly. Now, in the last 30 days, the majority of different body styles have actually gone up in price, with the exception of vans. And this is the first time that we've seen this in a very, very long time, nearly a year. 
Cars are still down in price in the last 90 days and year over year, which is great, but in the last 30 days, you can see that they are up. Just slightly, but up is up and we do have to acknowledge it. If we scroll down to makes, you can see the exact same thing. It's the first time that we've seen it in a very long time that the majority of different makes are actually up in the last 30 days in value. And while there are a few that are seeing the appreciation in the last 30 days and in the last 90 days, for the most part, cars are still down in value for those longer periods of time. Now, like I mentioned a moment ago, I don't think that this is overly concerning. And I think that if you are somebody who's looking to buy a car, this is probably one of a few different reasons why I would say you should hold off on that purchase. I wholeheartedly believe that this increase that we're seeing is due to those tax refunds and the seasonality demand that we see in the spring. And I don't think that it's something that is going to stick around long term, but it is very important to note. If you buy a car right now in April, you are probably going to pay a higher price than you would have paid in, say, March or February, and probably more than you will pay in the early summer, like June and July. And so what we've seen so far is that MMR values are relatively flat. And while we're not seeing huge swings with the car gurus used vehicle value index either, numbers are technically up in that used sector. But one thing that I always say is that dealerships and car sellers can price their car at a certain price all day long. But at the end of the day, whether or not that car is actually worth that price is dictated by whether or not somebody's willing to buy it at that price. And so one of the best things that I like to do when analyzing the used car market and figuring out what a fair price to pay for a car is, is to figure out what are these cars being listed for and how long are these cars sitting before they're being sold. So in order to get a good picture of that, let's head over to cars.com and let's look at a few vehicle listings. Now, here we are at cars.com, and whenever I do this, I like to put filters in that would reflect the average used car market. So a minimum year of 2020, a max price of something like 35,000, and a max mileage of 50,000 miles. And you can see here that as we scroll through, there are a lot of cars that are considered to be great deals. And we do have a lot of cars that have been sitting at their dealership lot for an extended period of time and have been reduced in price by quite a lot. Like this 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee that has 18,000 miles and is listed for $29,220. While this car is advertised to have a $675 price drop, if we scroll down, you can actually see that it has had $1,769 in total price reductions and it's been listed for 35 days. We have this 2020 Lincoln Corsair Reserve, which has 45,000 miles, and it's listed for $25,995. Now, as I mentioned in a video that I did a couple of weeks ago, Lincoln is one of the few brands that is actually discounting their vehicles at a dealership level. There are a ton of Lincoln dealerships that are not charging above MSRP, and this is because of the fact that Lincoln inventory is pretty out of control. They are, as of March, the number one automaker with the most inventory. And so they just aren't selling cars at the same rate they're producing them. And thus, if you want a car at a discount, Lincoln is a great brand to look at. And you can see here that if we look at this Lincoln, it's been listed for 82 days. It's seen $2,000 in total price reductions. And truthfully, I think that this really isn't enough given the fact that Lincoln has such an inventory problem right now. They should be reducing that price even more. We have another Lincoln, this one, a 2022 Lincoln Nautilus Reserve. It has 44,000 miles and it's listed for just under 35 grand. And this car, similar to the other one, has been listed for 83 days and it's seen $1,729 in price reductions. Again, probably not enough given Lincoln's inventory situation. This 2020 Toyota 4Runner, it does have higher mileage, 64,000 miles, which is higher than the parameters I had previously set, but it's listed for just over 32 grand. And it's been listed for 38 days with over $5,000 in price reductions. And this is interesting that Toyota is seeing this larger price reduction because as Lincoln has the highest inventory level for automakers, Toyota has the lowest. And so the fact that we are seeing price reductions with these lower inventory automakers, it's a great sign. But we do still have some used dealerships that are increasing the price on their car, like this 2020 Mazda CX-30. It's priced at $27,923. And even though this car has been listed for about three weeks, it has seen two different price increases, the first one of $1,212 and the second one of $298. We have this Hyundai Tucson listed for $26,812. This car has had over $2,176 in price reductions over the last three weeks. We have a 2022 Ford Maverick listed for $33,213 with 27,000 miles. This is a car that at one point was considered to be a really hot car and people were paying above MSRP for them. And this car has seen $1,784 in price reductions over the 12 days that it's been listed for sale. This 2021 Jeep Cherokee Trail Pack listed for just under 
25 grand, and this car has seen $2,000 in total price reductions. And we've got to show some EVs here because as you know, the EV market has been struggling in recent months, and this 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 5 SE standard range, it's listed for $32,000, it's only 2,600 miles, and this car has seen over $7,400 in total price reductions in the over a year that it's been listed for sale. And I did, out of morbid curiosity, also want to see where the 2023 Tesla Model Y long range and performance were trending, because last week Elon Musk and Tesla announced that they would be reducing the price of the Tesla Model Y long range and performance edition, and this will absolutely have an impact on the Model Y used market. But I don't believe that this impact has really been reflected as of recording this video, because prices are in my opinion a bit too high on the used level given the price reductions. So what all of this data shows us is that right now the car market actually went up, which is good for sellers and dealers, not so much for buyers. On the wholesale level, so that Mannheim level that I discussed earlier in the video, car prices are relatively flat. When it comes to the listing level, so what people are actually listing their vehicles for, prices are up. And while it does look as though cars are still taking longer to sell for and they are being reduced in price more often than not, the amount of reductions that we're seeing are lower than what we saw a few months ago. And as I mentioned throughout this video and in videos in recent weeks, I think that there are a few key reasons as to why we're seeing this, and I think all of them are temporary. Number one is tax refunds. We have seasonality. And I also think that there's a bit of seller delusion mixed into there as well. But I do think that all of these different factors point to a clear conclusion, and that conclusion is, at least in my opinion, that right now isn't the best time to buy a used car. And if I was in the market for a used car, I would wait a couple of months. I made a video last week talking about the sentiment whenever it comes to dealerships, how dealerships feel about the current state of the car market, their profitability, the outlook moving forward. And the overall consensus of that study was that dealerships aren't feeling good about the current state of the car market. They aren't making as much money as they once were, they feel a bit worried about that, and they don't feel as though the car market is going to improve short term. And I'm a firm believer that these factors are ultimately going to lead dealerships to have no other choice but to increase incentives and lower prices. You basically just have to wait the dealerships out, and at some point they're going to be squeezed to the point where they have no other choice than to change the way that they're currently doing things and the way that they're currently pricing cars. And we are already beginning to sort of see this because dealership incentives are going up. And they're not only going up from the dealership level, but they're also going up from the automaker level as well. In fact, just last week, Ford announced that they would be bringing back the stair-step incentive model in order to drive F-150 sales. And while many of these incentives that are currently being offered are being offered on the new vehicle level, there is definitely a trickle-down effect that has an impact on used cars as well. And of course, we can't forget the fact that tax refunds are having an impact here. Climbing dealership inventory will continue to have an impact and the fact that automakers aren't selling as much cars as they once were this is going to have an impact as well and i firmly believe that all of these different factors that are at play mean that if you wait a couple of months to buy that used car, you could get a much better deal. And so while I don't think that right now is the absolute worst time to buy a car, if you're strategically wanting to make a used vehicle purchase, I would personally wait until June. Take advantage of those end of Q2, end of month incentives, and by then tax season will be long over, spring will be done with, and you'll be able to really get a solid deal on a car. At least that's the strategy that I would use. And so again, while short term the car market has increased, I do believe that this is fully temporary, and I think that if you wait for early summer, you could get a stellar deal. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.